Anyway, with the increase in shark sightings, we decided to bring in the expert, yeah, expert this time, mm -hmm. who's breaking down all of the facts and myths of staying safe in the water. Yes, joining us this morning is wildlife biologist and co-founder of Fantasticus Pictures, Forrest Galante. Good morning, sir. Welcome, Forrest. Morning, guys. Before, How are you? We're great. We're better for seeing you. But can you give us your best shark uh, uh, impression? Impression. Man, there. This is hard to top some of those. I like just the simple. Uh, just the simple fit. The fin and the chum. You know? Yeah, the, that was good. Yeah. There's not a lot of growling with sharks. <laughs> That's true. I know. <laughs> anyway, I mean, we, you know, we hear there's serious elements to this as well as we're joking about certain things too. But so, give us the truth about sharks and shark attacks. Put it in perspective. Sure. Well, the truth about sharks, contrary to what a lot of people think, is that they have absolutely zero interest in eating or biting people, right? Mm -hmm. Sharks are out there making their living in their domain in the aquatic world, eating fish, seals, sea lions, you name it. And when they do happen to bump into somebody or nip somebody, that is purely a case of mistaken identity. Ooh. It is not happening intentionally. Right. I like that you say they're just out there trying to make a living. They're just trying to make That's a right. living in the water. <laughs> exactly. So, so there, there, exactly. there are over 500 species That's incredible. Of, of shark. And one of those 500 species, you know, we've heard of here in the tri state area, we've had actually had a problem with mm -hmm. sharks biting unsuspecting swimmers. But talk to us about the sharks don't inherently like humans, correct? No, and that's why, especially like where you guys are, all of the bites that you've seen recently are non-fatal, right? It's like a nip and the shark comes along and has this investigatory bite where it takes a, takes a bite and goes, Pleh! junk food, spits it out and swims away because really those sharks are not interested in human flesh. They're not interested in eating people. What's going on is it's summertime, it's hot out, people are flocking to the beach. And at the same time, fish are migrating in shallow along the beach because the ocean is warm. And so you have this confluence of events where sharks are hunting in shallow, people are swimming in the shallow ocean, and sharks are just bumping into people, making a mistake, going, what's that? Oh, not what I came right. here for. And that's why they're not fatal attacks. They're more like mistakes. Well, nonetheless, you don't really want to be part of their buffet line. I mean, let's be honest. Nope. No. But <laughs> in case you see one and suddenly it's upon you, how do you fend off the shark if needed? Yeah, well, first of all, before you even worry about that, I think the best thing to do is think about prevention, mm -hmm. right? And what that means is being a smart beachgoer, not swimming uh, around river mouths or where where fish are, fishermen are, um, not going in the ocean uh, during dawn or dusk because sharks are crepuscular. If you do happen to get up to one, I see your fact or fiction there. Go for the gills, poke them in the eyes. Those are true. That being said, it's... Uh, <laughs> It's pretty luck. difficult to yeah. do that. <laughs> what you can do is push it on the nose, and that will uh, that'll stimulate a special sensory organ that they have called the ampullae of Lorenzini. Oh. And when that organ is overly stimulated, the, sh yeah, <laughs> the shark sort of let freeze up and let go. And so that's what you want to do is you want to give them a little bop on the nose on if the you side. happen to be that close to one. So while I'm screaming, uh, mommy, you can't poke them in the know. eyes for chances of Okay, but can we go back to that fact or fiction for a hot second? So. Go go for the gills, you say, is that true? I mean, yes, but, Ish. you know, when you read something like that, you have a flash second when right. a shark right. is on you, right? You're right. probably not going, hmm, uh, the gills, the Right, gills. where's Here the gill? Are. You want to stay alive, right. right. You know, so while, while it is true, if you, if you do sort of punch the gills or punch the eyes, those are very vital organs to those animals, and so they're not willing to risk injury to them. The problem is it's just such a quick thing that the easier thing to remember that I always recommend is just go straight towards the nose Stay because the that's what's on you, that's what's closest to right. you, and that's what's going to make them release instantly. E easiest to get to. So what are the things we shouldn't be wearing as we go into the water that may attract or distract? I mean, positive or negative on that in yeah. terms of what we should be yeah. taking on our body as we go into the ocean. Chris, that's a great question. Something that a lot of people don't think about. You know, glittery, shiny mm. objects, mm -hmm. right? Whether you have keys hanging on or you're wearing a sequence bathing suit or something like that, that flash of light simulates a bait fish. And that's mm. when something is going to, to make a mistake. Now, another fact that a lot of people don't think about, don't take uh, water bottles, beer cans, Gatorade bottles, things like that in the ocean, because the crunching of that under oh. the pressure, mm. that also simulates the sound of fish bones crunching. And that'll oh. also get sharks oh. excited. So. You know, just wearing neutral colors, going for a swim during nice daylight hours, not right. at dawn or dusk, not near river mouths where other people are swimming. 
Choices like that are going to really minimize your likelihood of a negative shark encounter. Well, Forrest, thank, thank you so much for bringing that to us attention because I've been trying to tell him his glittery Speedo I know. has no place, not a place in the Atlantic Ocean. Maybe in the pool. That's yeah. about it. That's a safe <laughs> Chris seems like a real <laughs> rhinestone Speedo kind of guy to me. Only really yeah. safe place for that. Anyway, something <laughs> that people may, to put it in perspective, may not know that sharks aren't the most deadly animal right. in the world, correct? It's, it's a Correct. Yeah, no, they're, uh, well, first of all, and this sounds very, you know, gratuitous, but humans are the most deadly animals. Sure. That's very yeah. true. You know, we, we kill we each kill other for no reason. Anything. Good point. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. And sharks certainly don't do that. But no, sharks are nowhere near the most deadly animal in the world. There are, you know, mosquitoes rank at the very top of that list. And there's a long list of animals that come before sharks. However, we seem to have this intrinsic fear of mm -hmm. sharks and mm -hmm. i think that's one of the reasons shark week is so fantastic is because a week out of every year thanks to discovery channel is dedicated to educating people and showing them these magnificent creatures and, and teaching us to respect them right it doesn't mean that we should fear them but we should respect them and understand them enough right. to make sure that we do keep a safe distance right. from them Absolutely. they are misunderstood they are i think so beautiful creatures unto themselves they really are beautiful creatures. for us last night was the premiere of island of walking sharks yes. first of all mazel how did Thank it you. go are sharks gonna very now, very well are we gonna see sharks walking down 42nd street <laughs> Yeah, hide your kids, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, so Island of the Walking Sharks premiered last night. It was a fantastic show. The team and I head to Papua City to capture this footage that you're seeing right here, which is the first ever in history footage of one of the Papuan species of epaulette sharks leaving the ocean and walking on land. So it's a historic moment for shark science. Um, huge hit, everybody seemed to love it online, which is very exciting. Uh, it was massive for myself and my team to go to Papua New Guinea to study three different epaulette sharks, these amazing walking cat sharks, and capture this never before documented behavior and footage. Wow. So it was are, honestly, it was a mind blowing expedition. I was really, really happy to be on it. They are beautiful actually. They I mean, are, really and congratulations for job, making yeah. that history with that. That's no easy feat. To check Thank it out. You. Yeah, no, it was uh, honestly, if, if you had the audio on you here, I'm like completely freaking out. <laughs> oh, like, oh my God, God, nobody's ever seen this before. That is pretty cool. That's um, great. But it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> well, you have been a lot of fun. Thank Absolutely. you so much for joining us, enlightening us, teaching us about the do's and don'ts of aquatic safety when it comes to sharks. Give the shark a chance to be a shark. Let the shark be a shark. There you go. <laughs> Boris, thanks. Good time. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. And you can watch Shark Week on the Discovery Channel now through Sunday, July 31st. Yes, and you can watch that episode of Island of Walking Sharks with Forrest Galante for the remainder of the month on Discovery Plus as well. I want to watch that. Yeah, it looks interesting. All right.